Okay, so to start with, you take your mug and you want to make sure that it's cleaned. This one just came out of the dishwasher, went ahead and dried it off really well. And what I'm going to do next is clean it with some um, straight up isopropyl alcohol or uh, rubbing alcohol. And what that will do is uh, help clean off any residual oils, residues, and anything else on there. So I just basically clean off with a microfiber lint-free cloth. Uh, all along the surface of the area that you're going to be applying the uh, vinyl to. From there, what I like to do, uh, because I'm going to pre-cut a piece to this, is measure, um, I just have this, uh, this uh, loose tape measure here, um, the, act, the length and the width of this. So I'm going to get a piece of tape, and what that's going to be for is to basically hold the end of the piece of tape to my starting point. And I'm going to basically cut it off, or have it cut off right in front of the um, handles there. So I'm just going to tape my the end of my measuring tape there. The end of it will be right where the line uh, I want it to be. Wrap it around, and then I'm going to look. And I'll call that, so it's at 9. There's 9.5. So let's say 9 and a quarter. So I know you need to go nine and one quarter uh, inches wide for my vinyl piece. Next thing I need to do is figure out how how tall I want the vinyl piece to go. Uh, I recommend not necessarily putting the vinyl all the way up to the edge or to the lip of the drinking part of your cup. Bring it down maybe about a quarter inch is is what I'd is my uh, is what I probably recommend. And what that does is um, if it's right on the lip there, there's chances of it lifting off as you as liquids come right directly over it, you put your mouth on it, etc., etc. When it's down a little bit, yes, you're going to put your mouth on it probably a little bit, but um, at least the liquids won't be directly going into and possibly under the vinyl at that point if you didn't have a good seal. So what you can do is, same thing, you can use your tape measure and you can, um, in this case, you don't need the tape anymore. You can just see how tall it is. So in this case, this mug is three inches and three and three quarters inches tall edge to edge. So I'm going to give myself a quarter inch down and a quarter inch up because I don't necessarily want it all the way to the bottom. So half an inch. So I need a piece of vinyl that is going to be three and one quarter inches tall. And that's basically three and three quarters inch minus the half an inch, three and one quarters inch tall. Okay, the next step is to measure out your piece of vinyl that you're going to wrap the surface of your coffee mug with. Here I have a piece of uh, scrap vinyl. It's a very bright gloss metallic green. Um, it's uh, made by 3M. This is actually automotive vinyl. This is their 1080 series, uh, which is their outgoing automotive vinyl wrap series. They're switching over to the 2080 series. Uh, I had some of this left over from a scrap project and practicing. Um, I'm using automotive vinyl because it's very durable. Um, it is uh, repositionable if needed. It comes off very easily when you want it to, unlike permanent craft vinyl. Uh, but also it has some other properties that help you lay vinyl more easily, uh, such as air release. So meaning if you're applying this and you get a bubble stuck right in the center, instead of having to pull the whole thing up or pop a hole in it, most likely you should be able to just press it and work out that there. So we said that we needed our piece of vinyl to be nine and um, a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches tall. So nine and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Um, you can see that I have this uh, cutting mat with the grid pattern, which are in inch blocks, one inch blocks, and then uh, tick marks for quarter inches within. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. One edge of the vinyl is what's called the factory edge right here, which is uh, already perfectly straight. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage uh, along with my cutting mat here. So I'm just going to line up my cutting mat um, on the edge here. And then I'm going to count out or measure out from the edge nine blocks, which is going to be right here. So that's nine inches wide, but I want nine and a quarter, so one more inch, one more block there. So right here. Okay, with that being said, I'm just going to use my, my straight cutter here. Put the two marks on my cut line. 
and slice. All right, so now I have my piece of vinyl that is the correct width. Now I just need to make it the correct height. So again, I'm going to use my, the, my um, cutting mat uh, to my advantage here and basically line this up. Now I don't necessarily have factory edges on the top and the bottom, so what I'm going to do is um, measure that part out. So what I'm going to do is this will be my starting mark here. So one, two, three, and I need another quarter. So right here. All right, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side here. And since I do have it already lined up, so there's my starting mark parallel to this mark there. And then the other mark right here. Okay, I'm going to take my straight edge cutter, line up the notches on my cut line area here, and slice. Okay. So I've got one straight side now. Now to get the other side here, one mark there. And since now I have two straight factory edges on either side, I can use my um, uh, side guide there to make sure it's lined up or it's on there solidly and then make sure my lines are in the marks and slice. Alright, so now I have my piece which is um, nine and one quarter inches wide by three and one quarter inch tall in this case for the for the um, vinyl. So now what I'm going to do is the next step is to go ahead and take and place your vinyl uh, what's called mocking it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the edge, one of the straight edges, uh, about where I think I want it to be to start off with. And then I'm going to take a piece of tape here just to hold it in place for now. And like that. Then I'm going to wrap it around slowly and carefully making sure that I don't have any gaps in there and see where it ends and it ends right there so you can see that and then I'm going to take a look and eyeball it see if I like the gap and see if the gap between the ends of the handles are to the ends of the lines there and they look to me at least about right so from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sort of um, erasable marker or some sort of marking device that's wipeable or wipe you can wipe it right off or erase it and I'm going to make some marks here to, to know where I need to end up so I'm going to make one line uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera on the edge this way and I'm going to make two tick marks starting on the vinyl and going onto the mug like this and what that will do is as I wrap this around those give me the end points of where I should be ending up making marking ensuring that the two marks match together and then my endpoint um, reaches approximately where it should be um, so that I know that I've made this go straight all the way around. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off, start to peel some of this off here. Um, so I have the masking tape on here. You could start and wrap it all the way around uh, and then I'm going to start to peel off some of the backing paper from that mask uh, from the vinyl itself. So I'm going to do this carefully without ripping off my uh, my vinyl from the um, from the mug. So I'm going to start. Actually, I'll start on this side here if I can actually get this off the backing paper. There we go. Take off the vinyl, or excuse me, the backing paper from the vinyl, and then I'm going to carefully. Again, this is why the masking tape is helpful. It gets you started. Tack down the edge. Just like that. Now, if you have a squeegee or something to help push the vinyl down uh, a flat surface, that would be very helpful to have. If you don't have a squeegee, you can use like an old gift card or some sort of a card-shaped thing and, and maybe put a microfiber cloth on the edge of it. I just have this blue plastic P, um, 3M squeegee. And what I'm going to do is carefully start to kind of lay the vinyl on top of the, um, of the mug. 
just like that. Start pressing it down. Now you don't want to pull too much because what will happen is you'll put a t tension in the vinyl, too much tension in the vinyl, and you can make lines and distort the vinyl and or steer it in, in, a, in the wrong direction. Um, so what I'm doing now is just, I'm moving this around. I'm going to use my squeegee to help me out here because it's a nice flat surface and the side of this mug is flat. It's not a curved mug. And so you can see I'm just using my squeegee to lay that vinyl down slowly and evenly. Just like that. That's what I have so far. Turn it towards, towards you guys, hopefully to see a little bit better. And push this up against me here. Just like this. And I'm trying to make sure I keep, keep everything nice and straight. Continue on. I'm getting to the end here, and then I can see that I can see that I'm going to make my marks. So what I'm going to do is continue to just lay the vinyl down, nice and slow. There we go. So if you look here, I'm off my marks by just a hair. But as I look at the mug, as I look at it going around, I'm okay with that. Um, if you're not okay with that or you don't like it, the great thing about automotive vinyl is you can peel it right back up and it's repositionable. If when you're peeling it up, it stretches, give it a little bit of heat to let it um, shrink back to its original shape, another property of automotive or cast vinyl, uh, and then try to let it cool down so that it, the shape retains itself again, and then uh, try reapplying again. So there, wipe off that. Um, the marker that I put on there, which is just a, a water-soluble Crayola marker in this case. And boom, here you go. Now you have a mug that was old looking and kind of worn out. The uh, original emblems on it were fading off already with a nice, in this case, gloss metallic green accent. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be doing with this is adding a decal onto the coffee mug to put a uh, funny or witty saying on here. I've already got my decal um, cut out, uh, weeded, and then with transfer tape on it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and peel off the transfer tape with my decal on it. And then what I'm going to do here is eyeball it as far as placing and centering the decal onto the mug. Now. What you could do is find the center of the decal itself, um, mark it on the transfer tape, the center point, mark on your mug the center point of uh, where you want to place that and then put the two uh, overlaid on top of each other. I'm going to do it the uh, cowboy hard way here and just uh, do it like this, eyeball it. So I'm putting my handle down, I want it to be basically opposite the handle and I'm lightly placing where I think it needs to be looks level to me again you can be more precise with this by measuring it out and then once you've got it there what I'm going to do is just use my finger to rub it down use my finger to rub it down some more I'm going to take my squeegee press it down even better with a flat squeegee surface. Okay, now that I've got it on there, eh, it looks pretty okay. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully peel off the transfer tape. Don't go too fast when you're doing this because um, in case you did not press your vinyl lettering down as well as it should have been, and you don't want it to pull this off. So this vinyl that I uh, made the decal from is Oracal 651 Craft Vinyl, which is their permanent vinyl. Um, it's supposed to be dishwasher safe uh, once you've let it set and cure on the surface here for probably at least 24 hours. Um, you can see that the vinyl came off right there with that. So what I'm going to do is carefully, or the decal piece came off of that, carefully put it back. Press it down with my thumb, in this case really hard, and then slowly peel it back, maybe put a little bit of pressure, kind of roll the transfer tape off of the decal itself. 
And then, again, slowly just take your time doing this so you don't mess it up and have to peel all the letters off and start over again. So, all right, so that's done. And now I have a refreshed coffee mug that looks uh, new-ish, um, at least different. In this case, much more colorful than it was before with one of your, with a, um, what are you saying on it? No talkie talkie till dad finishes his coffee. All right, guys, hopefully you liked this video. Um, show you something kind of fun and uh, to do as far as if you had some old coffee mugs that are just looking kind of boring and want to add a little bit of a color and style or something different. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and uh, please give it a thumbs up uh, and hit that subscribe button so that you can get uh, notifications whenever I post any new content. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.